Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Crypto Tips. And yes, I'm here to talk about MetaMask again. Maybe this one will be a little bit more helpful for those of you who actually want to use MetaMask. You've gone through the warnings, you understand, but you just gotta get your DeFi fix. You just gotta use those NFTs. Here's your video for you on the best ways to keep yourself safe by using MetaMask. Let's get into it. Hi everyone, my name's Heidi. I forget if I said that in the intro or not. If I did, then there's my name again. Anyway, uh, welcome to Crypto Tips. Let's get into it. So uh, I did a previous video talking about MetaMask. This is like about a year ago, more possibly. It's gotten a ton of views, a ton of comments, a ton of opinions, which is great. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Um, but a lot of people were kind of calling me out saying I was being spreading FUD, being unnecessary. Uh, the types of information that you're sharing on MetaMask is typical of anything that you use, that you, you're interacting with on the internet. Uh, here are my... I'm just gonna address it real quick. First of all, MetaMask is used specifically to, inter to interact with your cryptocurrencies, the activities that you are doing with your cryptocurrencies. I believe that is something that should be very highly valued and protected because you never know how someone is going to use that information against you, be it a hacker, or if somehow that cryptocurrency is outlawed and now they have evidence against you, I don't know. It could get crazy out there. I just think that privacy gives you an option to reveal that information if you choose. And if you give up that privacy, that option is no longer there and people can own that information about you, sell it to other parties. They can use that information to target you, whether it's for marketing or that database can get hacked and that information can be used against you and you can find that your money is lost. Um, a lot of bad things can happen and I just think pr uh, protecting your privacy is something that a lot more people should be paying attention to and, uh, you know, uh, protecting. Uh, another thing about MetaMask that sets it apart from something like a website uh, or an exchange or something like this is that it's a web extension and that's a very important detail because that means it's function it's a web browser extension right so that that means that if it's enabled it does have the ability to read what you're doing on other websites if you forget to disable that and you keep browsing around on facebook your social medias shopping whatever it's just a lot of data that you don't know that they're collecting and how they're using it it is a product of google um so you know i don't have a lot of faith in that as i said in my metamask video as well uh take it or leave it that's my opinion and that's what i'm making a video on if you don't like it you can hit create a youtube video or you create a youtube channel make some videos and and spew your opinion as well um next up a lot of people were asking okay well what are the alternatives to metamask if you know it's so bad or if you don't want to use it what other options do you have Unfortunately, at this point, with things like DeFi, like farming, or with a lot of decentralized exchanges, or with like these NFT platforms for launching it and for selling your NFTs or what have you, you have to use MetaMask. So that's really unfortunate, but that's where this video is coming in, where I'm gonna tell you if you have to use it, you know, here's the best way to do that. Um, but also, you know, there's a lot of ex uh, decentralized exchanges specifically with Ethereum that allow you to connect directly to your Ledger hardware wallet or to a different hardware wallet. Most of them work with Ledger. I'm not sure about Trezor. I hope that, you know, there's as many hardware wallet options as possible, but I know Ledger is a very popular one. For example, with one inch, um, you can you can connect directly to your Ledger with exchanges like Uniswap. Last I used it, you had to connect uh, through MetaMask. You can use your Ledger, but it, you have to have MetaMask as kind of like the third party in between. Um, so I, I understand there's some instances where you have to use MetaMask and I just don't like that that concept that you have to use it. Anyway, the concept of my last MetaMask video was encouraging you to read things like the privacy policy and the terms and conditions of applications that you use regarding your cryptocurrencies. That was the whole point. And so, you know, if you're asking for what's the replacement, well, if you're on an if you're on a platform and you have choices between MetaMask, Wallet Connect, 
uh, Portis wallet, what have you, those are usually the different ones. Trust wallet is another one. Read the privacy policy of those, read the terms and conditions and see which ones you're willing to deal with. Um, I, that's the whole point of this channel as well as trying to help educate you who are watching it to be more educated and intuitive cryptocurrency investors and participants in this space. Okay, rant over. Let's get to these tips. I'm gonna knock them out real quick for you, okay? First of all, delegate your use of MetaMask to only one browser and you only ever use that browser for what you use with MetaMask, that's it. Don't do anything else besides whatever you need to use your MetaMask for. Just trying to separate, compartmentalize your activity of MetaMask with the rest of your life online. Number two, this probably should have been number one, use a VPN always whenever you're dealing with cryptocurrencies. It just really helps to perfect your, to again, protect your privacy. A VPN, um, I use Mulvad, M-U-L-L-V-A-D. I think it's a great option. They let you pay in cryptocurrencies. They don't collect any data about you. They don't want to know your name. They don't want to know your email, anything. They just want to give their product to you and you can pay in crypto. And for me, that's a really cool aspect of VPNs. Also in the CT club, which is our paid membership group, a link to that is down below in the video description if you want to check it out. I provide a lot of classes on things like this. I have a class on privacy talking about how to protect your privacy online and within the cryptocurrency space. And within that, I talk about VPNs. If you don't know what a VPN is, maybe check out that class, check out the group. It'd be great. We'd be happy to have you. Um, anyway, another cool thing with Mulvad is that you can share that subscription to with like five other different computers. So your whole family, or if you have friends that want to use a VPN, you can send it over there and share the cost. It's not that expensive either way. So next up, what you can do is look at which capabilities you can disable within MetaMask if you don't have to use those capabilities. Uh, I covered this in my past video, but uh, I know that sometimes you can disable, for example, what they read on different websites, um, even when you're not using it. If you disable that, some things might not be working. For example, listing certain Ethereum tokens, the balances won't be showing or certain functionalities won't be working. But again, if you are limiting your MetaMask to just one browser and you're not actually visiting anything else other than what is directly involving MetaMask, you probably don't have to worry about that so much. Um, also, MetaMask is open source. So for those of you who are tech savvy and can code your own and take that and run it yourself, you have an option there. I'll provide a link down to the GitHub of MetaMask down below in the video description so you guys can tinker around with that. Also, very recently, MetaMask had this new kind of idea thing release where you can connect your MetaMask to your Ledger Live application, which for me is a huge red flag because number one, typically if you connect your Ledger to MetaMask, it's just dealing with Ethereum. Because MetaMask is just an Ethereum-based web browser application for all things on Ethereum. If you connect it with Ledger Live, again, for this concept of convenience, who knows what other kind of data they're going to be collecting from every other coin that you're that you're storing on your ledger that branches way outside of ethereum again maybe people think i'm freaking out for no reason maybe that's not actually what's happening but for me that was just a huge red flag and a gut check of you know kind of being really invasive and again it put a bad taste in my mouth for metamask unfortunately um and that's the whole concept right is this this fight between privacy and convenience and MetaMask certainly is super convenient, um, but they, they chip away so much at, at your privacy. And, and basically, if you wanna use MetaMask in the most private way, in the most respecting way, you, you, it has to be really inconvenient. And them trying to interact with Ledger Live is another instance of that. So I encourage you all not to enable that. So those are my tips. I hope you guys enjoyed this and found something informative in this video. If you did, I appreciate it if you leave a like and hit subscribe to get more videos like this as they're coming out on a daily basis. I hope you guys are staying happy and healthy and I'll see you again soon. But until then, have a good one.